this time I will pull this electronic dice kit which was given to me by Assistation.com. The price of this kit is around three dollars which is in my opinion quite reasonable price for this kind of educational kit. This reminds me of some circuits I pulled when I was just beginning with the electronics and I can recommend beginners to get one of these just to play with. First you can solder the kit like the instructions tell you, then when you learn more about the circuit you can modify it, for example change the speed or other aspects of the circuit. This kit comes with a schematic and from the schematic we can see there are three parts of this circuit. First there is the 555 timer which generates the clock, the second part which is the 4017 decade counter and then there is this output stage. In the output there are LEDs and transistors. Multiple output pins from 4017 will go to same base pin of the transistor through the resistor which makes OR gate. If there is even one of these pins high, the transistor will conduct and the LED will shine. Both the 555 timer and the 4017 are very easy to use ICs and if you google those part numbers I'm sure you'll find enough information to modify this circuit if you want to change something. That was the manual, then the next most important part apart from the components, the PCB. This PCB has all the parts and their values marked which is very nice. One problem with this PCB you can see the silk screen isn't visible on the bottom of the PCB, but I don't think that will be a problem because there was nice layout image on the manual. So if I don't know which some of the components are, I can just see the manual and figure out which component goes to these places. The other side of the PCB, well it looks okay for the cheap one. The holes are nicely centered on the pads, which is one thing that might be a problem on some other cheap kits, but not with this one. Now let's take out all the components from the back. First of all there are IC sockets. I remember when I was a beginner I had just a couple of 555 timers and I will change them from circuit to circuit thanks to the sockets that I had used. Also this 4017 chip was one of my favorites back then. This kit comes with the battery connector both male and female, that's nice. Next up is soldering the kit. Order of soldering the components should go from shortest to tallest based on the height of the components. Because if you mount some of the tall components first, you'll have a hard time trying to put the shortest components on place. So usually I'll start with the resistors. The tool I used to bend the legs of the resistors is a 3D printed tool I found from the Thingiverse. Just search for resistor tool in Thingiverse if you have a 3D printer you can use. This was my first time using that tool and I don't think I will be using it anymore. I've been doing it by hand for so long that I basically know where to bend the legs of the resistors for each case without any measuring devices. Then before soldering I bent the legs of the resistors a little bit outward so they will stay in place even if I don't hold them. And now I can just solder them quickly. This was my first time soldering while watching what I'm doing on the LCD of the camera and I think I did pretty good job. Solderings are not perfect but they will work. There are no cold joints or anything like that. So now that I've soldered those resistors I will use my side cutters to cut those legs. And remember to watch out for flying resistor legs. They are sharp. Okay, I did rest of the resistors the same way as the previous ones, and now next component. I'll add this ceramic capacitor and place for this is in... Where it is? Where it is? I think it was here, like next to the 555 timer. I rechecked that from the manual and that's correct. Don't use too much force inserting these capacitors so you won't crack the case. It's not likely to happen, but if you use too much force it can happen. Now these transistors. Pay attention, there's transistors called 8050 and also 8550. They are different and you can't mix them. The orientation of the transistor is on the silk screen, so you just follow that. If the components are loose, bend the legs outwards again to keep them on the PCB until you have soldered them. Okay, here I'm soldering to do. 
my first soldered only one leg of the transistors so they would stay in place while I'm poking the PCB with the soldering iron. If I had soldered all the legs at once, the last transistor may shake and move on the PCB, so it would be on some weird angle. Just an aesthetic visual thing, nothing important, as long as all the pins are soldered to the PCB. There's just one bad solder, let's fix that. Okay. Now the transistors are in place, what's next? Well, the button is quite short, let's add that. Then his electrolytic capacitor. The polarity is marked on the capacitor as well as on the PCB. Don't solder this wrong way. It will go bang. I will also add the IC sockets at this point. The orientation is marked with small dent on the socket and same dent is visible on the silk screen. Just make sure all the legs go to the holes. They might be a little bit bent on the back while shipping, so straighten them up if needed. One could argue that these IC sockets are not needed and one could just solder the ICs directly to the PCB because there's no need to remove the Wi-Fi 5 Tamaro 4017 chip from this circuit. But I think for beginners who may not have resources to get new components every time they need, having an ability to remove the 555 timer from the circuit and use it on the other circuit is a quite nice thing. We are almost done, just the LEDs and the power connector. I will place the LEDs on the board, then when I'm done, I will cover them with cardboard or paper and flip the PCB around. Then I will solder just one leg of the LED and then I will bend the LEDs if they are not all straight. At this point my camera's battery was empty, but you get the idea. Before soldering second leg of the LED, I made sure all the LEDs were pointing at the same direction. Now I have powered the circuit with 5 volt power supply and pressed the button. The dice rolls quite long time and like you can see the rolling of the dice slows down and finally stops. Then next roll, rolling rolling, slower and slower all the time. This time the dice shows too. So that was pretty fun kit. It can be a soldering practice and it also shows some main features of these very versatile ICs 555 and 4017. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks, bye.